Well, today we're back at the shop, and I want to take a look at the 69 Coronet again. And going to give a quick little, uh, quick little overview of it for anybody who has not seen the car, or anybody who hasn't uh, kind of followed along with this car's journey. And obviously there's a lot yet to do with this car, but long story short, this car came out from a deal in Arizona where we bought six cars and a 426 Hemi. We have five out of the six cars still, but we sold one car, which was a 69 Roadrunner, and we sold the 426 Hemi. So this is, as you could uh, see by the badging and what it is, a Cornette 500. Uh, obviously two-door, it's obviously green, and obviously had a vinyl top, and it's got white interior. So this car has had some stuff done to it, as you can see by the uh, by the shifter, and it's got an e-body console in it, and uh, it w was a column shift car. It was a 318 car, but uh, obviously that stuff is no more. And I'll show you another little thing that uh, was surprising when we when we got it that is a real b-body dana rear end so pretty cool deal when we were informed about this car within the deal um of many cars this car was told to was uh presented to us as if it was a 383 four speed that just somebody swapped a 383 and a four speed instead of the 318 and automatic and that was it nothing else was done that's not true it obviously it does have the four speed and it has that uh inline hearst four speed shifter which is very desirable i've been told and when i was loading it on the trailer we saw the dana rear end so that's nice and obviously as i've shown in other videos this is uh if i can get this open that's not a 383. So, as I put, I put this air cleaner on, but obviously based on the air cleaner, you can tell what it is. It's a 440, four barrel. Um, it is a 68 engine for anybody interested in codes. You can see B440 there, it's really hard to see, but it is a 68. It has the HP manifolds on it. Uh, somebody went through and painted it orange. Uh, the reason I say that, for people who don't maybe know, is in 68, they did not paint engines orange. They didn't do that until 69. So, if you have a 68 engine and it's painted orange, well, somebody did that. That's not factory. And you can see, down to the heads there, it is, it is orange. So, somebody has been through this engine at one time or another. And I'm not sure if anything's truly been rebuilt or if it was just taken out of something, cleaned, spray painted, and that was it. So I don't, I don't have any claims to that. Um, I believe this may be HP engine. It is not stamped HP there, but it's really faint stampings to begin with. So like I said, I'm not going to claim that it's HP, but I was told by a friend if it has a VIN number, on the actual back of the block, which is where they're located in 68, that it is likely an HP, which I did check, and this does appear to have numbers, so I believe it might be an HP. Now, the, the number guys and the purist, maybe you say something else, that's fine. That's just what I heard, and that's what I'm going to go with. If it is, it is. If not, okay. So, it appears to be all stock. It sounds all stock, and I will fire it up for you guys. All I've done up to this point to the car is I've addressed a couple of little wiring things. i got to get that wire tied up. That wire was chewed. A couple other little wires were chewed. The distributor wire was chewed. I replaced that. I replaced the actual plug wires, which i still got to tie up better. Um, I didn't even clean the carburetor or anything. You know, I just cleaned it externally. It is the original Carter carburetor. And it is a 1968 440 carburetor. Even the numbers say it. So, uh, very, very original style setup that this car has going for it. 
If it wasn't for the fact that the VIN number and everything else says that it's a 318 car, this might be able to actually pass as an original 440 car. But obviously we know better than that. The brake reservoir, the uh, master cylinder I should say, uh, reservoir was empty. So I filled it up, pumped the brakes, and the pedal actually came back and this thing stops amazing. And the crazy part, I didn't even bleed the brakes. It just, everything just settled, it worked. I'm going to go through before I drive it very far or for any extended periods of time, I will go through and bleed the brakes, but I was driving it around a car show. I took it up and down the road, uh, right out outside the property here a few times, and it, it pulls strong, it runs good, it drives straight, and everything's fine. Um, and when I first got it, when we first got it, I should say, me and my dad, uh, none of the electronics worked. None. Headlights didn't work, turn signals didn't work, taillights didn't work, and I never, ever once touched a wire, related to that at least. But, as I'll show you in a minute, both turn signals work, brake lights work, headlights work, everything. The only thing that doesn't work is the reverse light, and that's because the, uh, the shifter, I believe, bypassed that wiring. You know, that's obviously not hooked up anymore because of that shifter uh there might be a spot to put a wire there but i'm not aware of that at this time so it, it was a bucket seat car white bucket seats with a buddy seat is what it was originally and then somebody found a e-body console to put over top of an inline four speed which i can confidently say i've never seen that before in a b-body but hey it's fine the turn signals work even. I mean, not the turn. The dash lights kind of work. They're a little dim. They probably need replacement. But this car does have rust. It does have issues. It's got some holes in the trunk. But it's very, very solid where it matters. I think one thing I might end up doing is just kind of grinding this rust out a little bit. Just getting the worst of the scaly stuff off. And even sanding the roof a little bit. And painting the roof black. I think that's something that I might want to do just to stop the rust. And I think the car would look pretty cool with it. Kind of like that uh, VO2 wannabe Roadrunner. Uh, I got videos on that if you want to see anything on that. Uh, these wheels will be coming off at one point or another. My dad really, really hates these wheels. Um... And I'm not a real big fan of them either. I'd like to find some 15 by 10 keystones. I have 15 by 7s for the front. Uh, there's some Kragers there that I got, but that's not related. If anybody has a set of 15 by 7 keystone, not 15, 7, 15 by 10 keystones that they would consider selling at a reasonable price, let me know. Um, obviously, I'm not asking for anything for free. That would be dumb. But if anybody has any, let me know. Obviously, because this is uh, this would look really cool with keystones, I think. But yeah, I think we might end up doing something with painting the top. If you would like to see the top painted, or you agree with that mindset at least, definitely drop a comment. Let me know. I kind of want to redo the black on the tail panel as well. You can see where it's supposed to be black around the lights, but it's not. It's faded from the Arizona sun. I have a nice rear bumper off of a four-door car because this one's dented up in the middle a little bit, as you can see. So I might want to swap that out. The only thing about that is it does have the two little uh, bumper guards that go right there, which I'm not a really big fan of. But I don't know. It might just be worth it to get that done. So how about, uh, how about we start this up and you can hear it run for a little bit. It was started like an hour ago for like not even a minute, so it's pretty much cold. If you want to call it a cold start, you can call it a cold start, I guess. So I'm going to do that and let me know what you guys think of that, and then we'll go back to uh, looking at the car and talking about it.
So hopefully that sounded at least uh, mildly good. Like I said, it's just a stock 440 is what I believe it is. Um, nothing fancy. And it's not running 100% as good as it could. Just because, you know, like I said, I never even took that carburetor off. And it was sitting for who knows how many years. Um, I never took the carburetor off. I did mess with the idle mixture screws and the idle uh, uh, stop screw a little bit. But not much. I could probably get a little bit better out of it, but I'm thinking what I want to do is I want to do a few tweaks to this engine. If I can ever pop the hood. I like how stock it is. I like how it looks and it runs good. It's strong, but um I guess I'd like to get a little bit more out of it at one point or another. Maybe not immediately, but at some point I'd like to get more out of it. And another thing that I worked on, power steering. Uh, it didn't work at all. I put fluid in it, turned it back and forth a little bit, put a little more fluid in it. I could turn that power steering with one finger. It's that nice. I didn't know that they are that nice, but this one definitely is. Um, anyways, but... I have a Torker 440 intake, or I have a, a YN 7511, I think is the number, accelerator intake. Either way, I've got one of those intakes. I've got a 750 Holley HP carburetor, and I the reason I want to leave the manifolds on is because they work. They seal. This thing has full dual exhaust with thrush mufflers. It sounds pretty good. Um, so I don't really want to disturb that too much. I don't really want to take the manifolds off and deal with headers and a potential leak. Don't get me wrong. Nine times out of ten, I'll choose headers. But this time is a little different. So an intake and carb would definitely help it out. Um... And I was looking at cam specs, and people are going to correct me in the comments, I'm sure, but this is rough numbers. If it is a HP engine, the cam is about five, or not five, the cam is about 455 lift. And if I put 1.6 ratio rockers on 455, it makes it 485. And that you would notice and feel and actually hear. A little bit so that's an easy without tearing into the engine too much performance upgrade that I'm thinking about another option or another possibility I should say is if it's the stock 350 horse 440 cam it's about 400 and 435 440 lift which then still would bring it up with the one sixes to about if my if I'm remembering my numbers right, it's been a little while since I did the math on it. But if I'm remembering right, that would still bring it about in the range of 470, 470, 475 lift. So regardless, if I could find a set of 1.6 ratio rockers that were budget friendly, um, I would definitely do that and see the difference uh it would be interesting and if anybody has a set that they would potentially want to sell for you know reasonable reasonable money uh my emails in the description all my videos definitely give me a shoot me an email or something give me a price and maybe maybe we'll do something you know so that's something i want to do with the engine at some point in the future now the suspension of this car is pretty good but it's an Arizona car, so back behind all the tires and everything, obviously. The bushings on, like, the uh, lower, uh, the tie rod ends and stuff like that, they're not great. They're cracked, and I can see it. Uh, you probably can't see it through here, but I can see it when I've been underneath the car. And they would probably be fine like that for a while, but whenever I dig into the car deeper, it would be something that I would probably address. Now, the interior, I'd like to find white seat covers, but I have some a little bit better white seats at home that I might put in, or I actually have a set of recovered uh, diamond stitch 
black seat covers that I might put in it. I don't know. The reason I don't want to use these seats is because, like I said, the car is from Arizona. This is the actual seat foam right here. You're not supposed to be able to push on it that hard and it not move. <laughs> so they're not comfortable and they crumble when you sit in them a little bit. So these have got to be stripped down to the cores and redone, which is fine. We got cars that will need cores. Uh, steering wheel I want to address. I have a black 69 B-body steering wheel. Uh, so I could put that in there. This is like a 68, I believe, base model, two-door post, bottom of the barrel, Roadrunner, or even like a Belvedere, uh, steering wheel. This one's, this one's just bad. Um, I'd like to try to find a radio to put in it. The gauges I do mostly trust. The gas gauge mostly works. But I want to get, maybe for under the dash, or maybe in the dash, if I could do so tastefully, I would like to get a tack and a water temperature gauge. So then I've just got a little bit more security whenever I'm driving it around, so that I'm not quite as worried. Because, like the 69 Roadrunner, if you remember that car, the B7 Blue 4-speed car, that car, the gauges work. But there's some sort of wiring issue, and I don't trust them because the uh, the the temperature gauge will go from sitting about middle, it'll just randomly spike, and then drop back down to zero, and then it'll sit in the middle where it should, and then if I turn the headlights on, it'll spike, and it's it's just screwy. There's a wire crossed or something wrong with that. Um, so obviously I don't think that there's anything wrong with the wiring on this, but a secondary a secondary gauge just to make sure would be nice. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. But I want to get the bumpers and the trim and everything polished up and I think that it would look good with a black top. So let me know what you guys think. I know this has kind of been a long drawn out, not a whole lot happening kind of video. Um but I've been just trying to get videos out. I've been trying to do more stuff. And one more little thing is for anybody watching to the end here and anybody going to the 2023 No Name Nationals, I will be there. I won't have a car, I won't be racing, but I will be there with Mark from Bigfoots and Mopars and I'll be hanging out there and I'll be doing stuff and saying hi to people and uh, I'm potentially working on a deal where I might have some shirts there for people to buy if they're interested, so... I don't know, keep an eye out for me if anybody wants to say hi, you know, definitely don't hesitate, I'm more than happy to talk cars with people, so hope to see a few of you guys there, it's uh, Sykeston, Missouri, it's a racing YouTube event, spectators are allowed, you can walk through the pits, you can actually uh, talk with people, you know, that you watch their videos, so it's a really cool event, but definitely check that out if you haven't already, it's called the No Name Nationals. But anyways, I hope I hope a few of you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's been drawn out, but I'll leave it there. Definitely consider liking, subscribing, all that other fun stuff. And leave a comment. What would you do with this car? But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.